My name's Amanda. I'm a compliant medical marijuana patient and caregiver, a mother of two, and I was raided and prosecuted by the state of Michigan Attorney General's Office. So on March 19th of 2015, uh, started out of any other day, we were on our way to the office, my son and myself, and the state of Michigan, there were probably about five or six police officers pulled us over and executed a stop and subsequently arrested both myself and my son, my 21-year-old son. At that point, we were escorted down to Canton Police Department where we were booked and we sat in jail for 36 hours while they raided both of my businesses, my home, and uh, basically turned our lives upside down from that point forward. They arrested us because of um, there was an ongoing investigation for the previous nine months in regards to a marijuana dispensary I had in uh, the city of Canton. And they were watching and surveilling us for over 500 hours for nine months and uh, finally decided to execute a warrant for a document search. So with that being said, we were put in, in jail and uh, held in a holding tank for, for a period of time while they looked for the documents that they needed to prosecute us. We ended up with five felony charges. Two charges were out of Washtenaw County and three charges were out of Wayne County, some of which included a continuing criminal enterprise um, marijuana distribution and possession and intent to deliver. The whole case was based upon the testimony of a confidential informant. Michael was able to cross-examine her so well that he uncovered a lot of errors and as such we got th three of the charges dismissed, two of the charges dismissed and we're appealing the third. She perjured herself, and luckily we were able to find out that she was working off three continuing enterprise, criminal enterprise charges for her boyfriend. And that's what she was doing and coming to, to uh, work as a confidential informant on my case, is she was trying to get him a lesser sentence, which in fact he did. He was the only one of three, uh, of his circle of three that was not put in jail. She came in as a vendor to sell vaporizer pens. Uh, she came in as a patient several times to get cannabis products for her own use. And then there were approximately four times in which she came in and she was working with the Canton Police Department in the state of Michigan. She purchased products, took it back to them, and they were logged as evidence. Partially why it happened, because I was opening a, a, a doctor's office across the way on the other side of town. The city did not want me to do it. They said it was an acceptable use. But there wasn't anything in the ordinance or the code that said that it, it, it was not a permitted use. So I spoke with the city attorney, and she said, you're not opening. Shortly thereafter, within a week's time, we were raided. When I was at the jail in Canton waiting to be booked, the lieutenant came over to me and she said, you must be Amanda Jocelyn. And she held out her hand. I stood up to shake it. She said, you're the one that wanted to open the office on the other side of town. I said, yep, that was me. And she said, well, I guess you got your answer. So being in Canton, we made sure to put our establishment in a strip mall and go above and beyond what was expected. So we didn't have any issues with the city or the state of Michigan in regards to what we were doing. We had several inspections that carried on for months. We had the chief of fire department come through, do three inspections. We had the building inspector come through. The landlord was in the same strip mall. 
We had several inspections in the facility to make sure that we got the go ahead from the city officials and this still happened. This was all to make sure that I had no means to continue. It was intentional. Okay. It wasn't because I was a risk yeah. to the society or I was doing something that was totally wrong. It was because they didn't want me there and they made sure that I wasn't there. And that's, I think, where it comes to the most frustrating part because after all of this happened, when we find out that there was so much corruption within the system and the prosecutor, which was the assistant attorney general, is now a judge and is suppressing all of that information with the confidential informant, that's, that's why it was so frustrating because it was all on purpose. It was all on purpose, and I could see it unfold as time went on, that all of those people in Canton right there were the ones that just wanted to destroy me. So we get out of jail after 36 hours. We go home to assess the damage. We get there, and the door has been beaten in. Um, we live in the city, so it was very unsafe to have the door unable to be locked, especially when they took all of our money, including our vacation fund, which was consisted of a bunch of pennies and nickels and whatever we had in our pocket. Uh, so we had no money to our name to fix the door. We had uh, stuff strewn about the house. They took documents. They took televisions. They took iPads. They took phones. They took my mop, my electric steam mop that I had. Uh, they took my, um, gosh, what else did they take? Basically, I mean, they took everything that wasn't nailed down. After they'd already taken our cars, uh, to my, my car, they took my son's car, and I had a, a, a boyfriend at the time, they took his car as well. So actually three cars they seized. Uh, they, uh, they also um, put a lien on my home. It was almost paid off. They put you in a position to where they don't feel as if you have any means to survive. And they put you in a situation where you are completely wiped out and annihilated. And the hope is that you give up and roll over and you don't fight. And luckily, Michael isn't that kind of guy. He. Um, they, after they put the, the lien on the house and there was no source of income because they closed both of the doors on my business, <clears throat> we had no way to recover. And um, so uh, we lost everything. As they went through our house, they took uh, basically any property that they determined was of value, which included electronics, um, our vacation change jug, um, my mop. They took all of the things out of our drawers and our closets and just strewn them about the house. It looked like a war zone when we got there. And they broke the front door even though they had a key. So they barged through the front door. They broke the window in the house in the upstairs bedroom and took my vehicles, took my house and closed, effectively, closed two businesses, put tags on the door, so as we could not continue. We've been going through the court battle for approximately three years, and we actually just ended, of all five charges that were brought against myself, they ended up dismissing four, and I was convicted of uh, possession with intent to deliver felony charge, which then would I'd uh, have to pay six thousand dollars for a fine there was no probation but that felony charge will follow me for the rest of my life luckily shortly after everything happened I was able to find Michael Camorn he's a very prominent attorney within the community uh, I was able to to uh, contact him and he accepted my case and he's been a lifesaver up to this point and um, so he stuck with me and fought the Attorney General's office with a vengeance. And uh, that's why a lot of the charges were dismissed, because they had no grounds for them. And 
the only one that they could they could stick me with is the possession with intent to deliver, and that is because of the way things were displayed at the at the shop. Um, since the raid, we've been going through this for three years, and it's completely and totally consumed our lives. I've been prosecuted for the same behavior that is currently being licensed by the state of Michigan. No criminal intent, no previous criminal history for myself or my son. And we were upstanding members of society up until that day. Yes, everything that I'd worked for, everything that my son had worked for, his whole savings was taken, gone. And that's, I think, you know, just on a side note, I think that was probably one of the more devastating things about this whole thing was what they did to him. I'm not even kidding you. There was, a, 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 about two months ago, a kid came ringing the doorbell. I about had, I mean, I literally had a panic attack. Your whole sense of security is gone. Yeah. Whole sense of security because every, what you thought was acceptable wasn't. So that puts into question every little thing that you do from this point forward. Since the date of the incident, I've been dealing with a whole host of emotional issues such as severe anxiety, depression, um, panic attacks for simple things such as somebody ringing the doorbell, driving the car down the highway to go to work is a, a challenge. They've taken away a sense of security that I once had. For my son, they've also taken away his security. They've, he's been in depression as well for the last couple of years. And there's a lot of underlying anger as well that we have to work through and deal with. 500 hours of surveillance when there's an opioid there, epidemic going on, running rampant safety. through our communities, killing people, killing families, destroying futures, and they parts. find it necessary to prosecute a marijuana crime. And again, they're, they're licensing people for the same activity that they destroyed our lives over. Since the sentencing, uh, that we've done a lot of work to try to start our lives new, um, moving to a new area. We have uh, a new office that we're working on building up. It's been a, it's been a real struggle trying to put a, our lives back together and put the pieces back in the puzzle. But we've finally come to a point in which we're able to start over. The, the sentencing was about 30 days ago and we are currently appealing the decision. And we're pretty confident that it's gonna be a good outcome. We went through the district court system several times in both counties. After that, we were bound over to the circuit court where we spent probably two years of the case. And now we're at the point of appeal, and what we're hoping for next is for a dismissal of the charges for possession with intent to deliver, and that will be five felony charges that will be dismissed instead of four. They threatened with over 40 years in jail for myself. For my son, it was about 20 years. And again, this is for the same activity that they're now licensing, the state of Michigan is licensing for. So it's kind of a sweet victory and a sweet justice that now as we're putting the pieces back together, we have the office going and we're able to do the patient outreach and, and um, advocacy because there's a real need for it. And education, if we are able to talk about cannabis in a positive way, then there's less of a stigma and there's less of, an, of a chance for, for the state to come in and mess with people. Honestly, I just want to say F Bill Shooty. <laughs> yeah, he, his office prosecuted you. Yes, you his office prosecuted me and my son, and they attempted to destroy us. <laughs> yeah, for a plant. Mm -hmm.